Boujou, Kinemagi Nene Erlen and Dishnikas, and welcome to this production of the My Math Network. Today's episode from Chapter 4, Lesson 1 Estimate Quotients. Being a new chapter, we have a new essential question that will be in place throughout the entirety of chapter four. What strategies can I use to divide by a two digit divisor? So let's begin at the investigate the math. This part is not yet in your handout, so you should be paying attention to me. What generalizations can you make when rounding dividends and divisors? Well, here's an easy one. Pick something that's easy to do. Do you wanna make your work harder? Do you? Do you? No, of course not. You want to make this easier. These are situations that you don't need an exact answer. So you want something that's close, but quick. If you wanted to spend a lot of time to get an exact answer, you'd do the standard algorithm and get it done. Instead, we just want a quick answer. So let's look at this one. Estimate the quotient, 564 divided by 64. When written in this way, the 564 is a number that would normally be underneath in the, as the dividend. And 64 is the divisor, the number that would be on the outside. Let me grab my annotation tool and slide this up here. So we're going to look at two different ways of doing this. One, estimate by rounding. 64 rounded to the nearest 10 is, and if you just shouted out 60, I heard you, because it is. 564 rounded to the nearest 100. So if we're going to the hundreds place, we look to the number to the right, six is greater than four. So it's gonna go up to 600. Now, all I have to do is take my new dividend of 600 divided by my new divisor of 60. And now we have a, a little trick we can use. Remember, we can cross out a zero on each side, kind of like dividing both by 10. And now I have 60 divided by six. Six goes into six one time. There's still one zero there, so I need to make it 10. Now let's go over here using compatible numbers. 64 rounded to the nearest 10 is still 60. So you can start seeing that some steps are probably gonna be a little bit closer. 564 changed to a number that's compatible with the rounded divisor. So something that six will go into evenly. For this example, I happen to, re I could go 600 or I could go 540 because um, I want something that this six right here will go into evenly. So if you remember back when we did this, something close, I either have two options, 540 or 600. I'm going to go with 540 only because you've seen 600 right next to it and why make you see it twice. So Again, I'm gonna start by typing it out, 554 divided by 60. Remember our step, we can get rid of a zero on each side because there's one on each. And now we're back to 54 divided by six. And if you remember your nines trick, that the answer is nine. So you have one way gives you a 10, one way gives you a nine. Both are pretty easily done in your head and neither would be considered wrong. So let's move forward. And you see that they their answers did the same thing. So let's look at this way, estimate the quotient. 634 divided by 84. First, let's do it by rounding. I'm gonna grab my annotation tool again, and I'm going to round 634 
to the nearest hundred, which is 600. And I'm gonna use that as division because I do not have a little division thing on this. And 84, I'm gonna to go to the nearest hundred again. I could have chosen to round to the nearest 10, which would be 80, but is does 80 go into 600 easily? No. So we want opted to go to the nearest hundreds place. And now if we remember our trick, you may you probably don't need this, but there are two zeros and two zeros. So now I'm to six divided by one is six. Remember when to taking off these zeros, you're really dividing by whatever multiple of 10, well, in this case, it would be 10, 100. So I had to take the equal number of zeros on both sides. If there were no zeros, I couldn't cross anything out. Or if there was only one zero on one side and nothing on the other, still can't cross anything out. So let's go compatible numbers. Let's say I'm choosing not to go the rounding that's here. Instead, I'm looking at this eight and the 63 here. I need something that eight will go into that's similar to 63. And if you're like Mr. I, eight times eight is 64. So let's go with 64. It is a three digit dividend. So I need to make sure I still have three digits. Otherwise I'm changing the place value. I'm gonna use this as divide again. And now with the eight, I'm gonna keep it at 80. So let's go ahead and get our, divide both sides by 10. I have 64 divided by eight. And if you were yelling out eight times eight is 64, then you already knew this, that 64 divided by eight is eight. So this allows you the choice. Do note that we did get a little bit different answer this time. Um, which way is the best way would have depended on the context. As far as just plain numbers, I would accept both. So let's go ahead and clear. We're gonna get into the text here. We're on math in my world, example, basic. Try to adjust this just so. Maybe not. Can I make it? A little? The school principal has 812 flyers to pass out equally to 19 different teachers. About how many flyers would each student or teacher receive? So step one, round the divisor to the nearest 10. And the divisor again is the number you're dividing by. Let's grab the annotation tool. What's the nearest 10 to 19? Well, I start here at the one because that's in the tens place. I look to the number of the right. If it's five or greater, it goes up. So that one becomes a two. It's a two digit divisor, so it needs to stay that way. We have a 20 and I'm gonna go ahead and put the 20 right below it as well. Make sure you're filling this in on page 263 as we go. Now step two, round the dividend to the nearest hundred. Here's the hundreds place at eight. The number to the right is a one. One is less than five, so it's gonna stay at an eight. It's a two di three digit dividend, so it needs to stay three digits. So we add those zeros in, 800 divided by 20. Now at step three, you could divide, by me div divide mentally. I'm going to go ahead and type these in for you, and you should be writing these in of what we're doing, 800 divided by 20. You could say, you could do the removal trick here, take one on each side, and we're 8 divided by 2 is 4, and there's still one zero left, we get 40. So each teacher would receive about 40 flyers. As always, if you need a moment to write in the numbers, feel free to pause the video and write the numbers in and then unpause the video and continue when you're ready. All 
All right, let's move forward here by clearing my drawings. And we'll move to the, you can see the answer key there. Let's move to the top of 252, the example niche. Helpful hint, another way to write 234 divided by 41 is like this, and that's what I talked about earlier. Estimate 234 divided by 41. You see our first two steps here. And this is steps one and two at the top of your page. 40 to the nearest 10, that's, we have a four, the number next to it is a one, so it's gonna stay a four, which stays two digits. Change the dividend to a number that's compatible with the rounded divisor. So I need something that four will go into equally. So let's look at our focus on 23. What is close to 23, but divisible by four? 24 is, and it's a three digit dividend, so it needs to stay three digits. So now we will have 240 divided by four. Make sure these are written in, we'll move forward. You'll see the answers here. Go ahead and use the annotation tool. We said it was 240 divided by 40. Four goes into 24 six times. Both of those zeros would go away. We get six. So the quotient is about six. Could I check my work? Sure, I could go six times 40 is equal to 240, and 240 is close to 234. Make sure you've written that in. At this point, we're gonna ask you to do some independent practice. I'll bring it up here on the slide. I would like you to do numbers two, three, and four at the top of 253. In each case, write out what you estimated. So tell me what you turned 121 into and what you turned 42 into. And in this case, you should use the rounding. So you should be rounding either to the nearest 10 or the nearest 100. You may pause the video, complete the assignments, and remember to unpause the video and come back and let's see how you did. Welcome back. Let's bring up the answers. First one, four goes into 12 pretty easily, so that works really nice. 120 divided by 40 was three. We had 400 divided by 20, which is 20, and 640 divided by 80. Those are sample answers because you may have chosen on a problem like this to go 600 and 100 and get six. All right, let's try some by compatible numbers. I would like you to try eight, nine, and 10. Same thing applies, pause the video while you work, unpause the video and come back when you're ready. You may pause your video now. Welcome back, let's see how you did. Using compatible numbers, remember, means now the rounding rules aren't the most important thing. You want something that five will go into easily. And you might say that, well, Mr. Ireland, I'm going to 65. I know five times 13 is 65, and that would work. That's why it's a sample answer. Or you could go 700 divided by 50 is 14. 250 would be, both be the easiest way to go here. And 300 divided by 60, because six goes into 35 times, makes it easier. All right, let's pick a random story problem. The area of a rectangle is 138 square meters and the length is 21. About how many meters long is the width? 
Remember, here are your, the numbers, your dividend and your divisor. Go ahead and solve the problem. You may pause the video now. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. You had about 140 divided by about 20. Came to out to about seven meters. All right, we are to the point now where you can complete your assignment. You may choose to complete the My Homework page 255 and 256 or the attached Google form. I look forward to seeing just how well you did. If you have any questions, please do consider attending office hours at 2 p.m. or the live stream during the day. You may also email me at mirland at psychchipschool.net. So I wish you all a minute. Gijigad. Bama P.